This conference will now be recorded. Hi, welcome to Navigating Verification. My name is Christina Winstead, and I'm the Assistant Director for Outreach at the Washington Student Achievement Council. I work with the 12th Year Campaign. Today, we're going to talk about the process of verification for students who have applied for financial aid. This is a part of a series of videos for Financial Aid Advising Day to help you understand all the different aspects of financial aid. Our goal is to make sure that you can maximize all your financial aid opportunities so you can take on the least amount of debt as possible when you're pursuing your post-secondary education. Today, you're going to learn about what verification is, why students are selected for verification, how they're selected for verification, and the common documents required for verification and resources to help you. So why is this important? The truth is 30% of students are selected for verification. And if you're selected for verification, you have to complete the process. If you don't complete the process for verification, your college cannot give you a penny of financial aid funds. So you have to complete the process and submit all the documents before they can even give you an award letter. Every year, thousands of students do not complete the verification process and do not complete their post-secondary goals, do not receive the funding for this. This is why it's so important. To me personally, I've seen students who have not been able to complete this process because they missed deadlines or they just ignored it. So we want to make sure that if you're selected for verification, it's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. We're just here to help you navigate this process that a third of students typically are picked for so that you can receive your financial aid that you're eligible for. So like I said, verification, what it is, it's just a process that colleges use to confirm that data that was reported on your FOSFOR or WAFSA is correct. So this can be uh, one of those processes that really helps students when it comes to if there's an error. Like I had a student that their parents made $62,000 they also listed their own income as 62,000 because they like, well, my parents make that money, then so do I. And so the parent and the student's income ended up being double what they actually made and the student wasn't eligible for certain types of aid because of it. Financial aid officer saw that and thought, hmm, I don't know many 18 year olds that made that much money last year. Let me check with them and do verification and make sure. And that's when the student went, no, 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 my parents made that, not me. I made like 500 bucks. And they were able to provide the student with an accurate award letter that had the right amount of grant aid and gift aid on it because they weren't duplicating their income. So verification can be used to clarify things. Like I said before, about a third of all FOSFA filers are selected for verification. You can be selected for verification whether you do the FOSFA or the WAFSA. Some people are selected for verification at random and sometimes it's to, to clarify an error like I talked about before. So how do they select students? Students can be selected randomly by the Department of Education. So it just can randomly select, we'll pick this person, this person, and this person. Uh, sometimes schools will need to select you for verification to, to make sure to verify different income information. No matter how you're picked for verification, you have to respond quickly. I'm gonna say this a million times in the next 10 minutes, but you have to respond quickly because there are deadlines for verification. When you are selected for verification, they're commonly gonna ask for tax documents. Typically, it's gonna be what they call V1 verification, and they're gonna be checking to make sure the income you listed is the same as what's actually happening. So, you will be asked to provide what's called typically a tax transcript, although in some years, they've allowed you to use your tax return signed if you can't access a tax transcript. So what are these two documents? One is the actual document they use to file taxes. The other is just a summary from the IRS saying you've submitted taxes and here was what was on there. Typically when you're selected for verification, they want the tax return transcript, which you get from the IRS either online or through a paper application. Sometimes they'll also ask for a letter of non-filing. This is typically used if you're an independent student and you had no income. So they just wanna make sure, hey, you didn't earn anything last year, let's make sure that that's correct and then they do a, a verification of non-filing. So you didn't file taxes, that's fine. You're gonna send away or go online to get a tax transcript and a letter of non-filing. You can order these documents online. You will need a social security number, your date of birth and your filing status, as well as a credit card or mortgage or a home equity loan, a car loan, some sort of loan, some sort of credit and then a mobile phone number um, with your name on the account. If you don't have that, that's okay. You can order these documents through paper as well. 
And you can do that by submitting a 4506 tax document. So this is an IRS form, it's right online, it's fillable PDF, and you can send it right in uh, to the IRS to request to have a tax return, either a tax transcript or a letter and on filing sent to you. All of these things are what we call supporting documentation. When you submit your verification to your college, please note that you will not receive these documents back. So if you want to make a copy for yourself, uh, I encourage you to do that to keep something, retain uh, copies of what you've submitted to them. So another way to clarify for verification is they may say, hey, use the data retrieval tool on the FAFSA and input your data that way, and then it's been imported from the IRS and we won't have to, we can use that as verification of your income. If that's the case, what you'll want to do is make sure that your parent has an FSA ID. If your parent doesn't have an FSA ID, you won't be able to use the data retrieval tool. That's okay because you can use the other things like getting a tax transcript. Uh, if your parent was married when they filed taxes and is now no longer married, uh, they will not be able to use the IRS data retrieval tool. Um, if the parents are listed as unmarried and living together, you're unable to use it. If you filed a foreign tax return, uh, you won't be able to use one as well. So there's certain situations where you can't use the data retrieval tool, but if you can, I encourage you to use that in the application process itself, as well as for verification to make sure that they can verify through the IRS what your income was. Okay, so here are my tips for verification. I've been helping students for the last couple of weeks nonstop with verification. So I will say number one is if you get stuck, please reach out to your financial aid officers. They are there to assist you, but they are not psychic. If they were psychic, they'd be have they'd have other jobs. Let's not kid ourselves. So they don't know you have questions until you reach out to them. You want to start this process and finish it as soon as possible because there is a deadline. And if you miss the deadline, you might miss out on funds that were available to you because your financial aid officers cannot award you funds until this process is complete. So if you get stuck, you're gonna reach out to your college. If you can't access the documents that they are asking you for, especially due to COVID-19, reach out to your college. You always wanna reach out, but don't pretend like uh, this doesn't exist uh, because the consequences that you will not be awarded. I know this personally because I have seen students who have ignored the process and thought it's just something they could kind of skirt around and they couldn't and they had to wait a quarter out until they could get funds. If you need more help, of course, we're here to help. We have uh, another tool and resource for you and that is Otter. Otter is a free texting service that can help you navigate financial aid. I encourage you to sign up this for this early, but you can text in your questions. So you can say, hey, I got selected for verification. Where can I get help? Uh, or, hey, I am trying to get these documents, but they will be able to help you. And if you stump Otter, then we will make sure that you're connected with somebody who has the answer. So this is another way for you to get help. So to recap, verification is that process. It's very common. You most likely will be selected for verification at some point in your post-secondary education. I was selected for verification three times in a row, and I was selected for verification when I worked for financial aid. So if I can be selected, then you can be selected too. Just be ready for the process. Reach out when you have questions and clarify if you receive anything and you don't understand it, clarify immediately with your college about their process. Thank you so much for learning about verification. We encourage you, if you get stuck with verification, reach out and we're here to help. And we encourage you to use all of your resources as you navigate the world of financial aid. We have other videos that can help you through our series here. And if you have other questions additionally, please feel free to reach out. Thank you and have a great day.